Hey, y'all, I want to t tell you about a, uh, a, a program that I went to for the first time and really inspired me. Uh, Bill Gates may not have done a hard time, but it's a good reminder that we all make mistakes, and some of us have the resources and the friends to get us out of trouble when we get in. Others don't. They wind up in prison. We are the top state in the union, bigger than some countries in the world in terms of our prison population. I talked to an author of a definitive book on the topic, and he says our prison system in Texas leaves these men angry, less employable, and worse off. So I went and participated in December as a volunteer at the Prison Entrepreneurship Program in the prison in Cleveland, Texas. That's about 40 miles northeast of Houston. You turn left at the Sam Houston st statue going down 45. Twice a year, they send out a recruiter who is an ex-con, who goes out to the prisons and finds the 150 most promising men who are soon to be released and brings them to Cleveland where 50 of them will graduate from a mini MBA program. They learn personal finance, they learn business finance, they learn marketing, all of it with these core values woven into it. And it culminates at the end with a business plan competition. The stats behind this organization blew my mind, and that's why I had to go see it for myself. But what I wasn't prepared for was how moving the stories of these people we think of as criminals really were. And I want to share some of that with you today. This is what prison looks like. At least it's what one piece of it looks like. This is Club PEP. That's Jamil, who was our MC that day. As execs, we went running in through like a tunnel of, our, of prisoners like you're running onto a football field. They really try and celebrate achievement. And executives from all over the state come to mentor and, in this case, judge the business plan competition. Uh, the fellow in the burgundy there had a special mission, too. He was not just a judge. His son-in-law, who had also been his employee, was one of the contestants. That's his son, Jonathan. He had a story that it was so common to all of these guys. They've, many of them had broken homes. They've had to deal with drug use. Many of them have been in the military. And then they come through this program. They start with a uh, warm-up game called Step to the Line, where the host will say something. And if it's true of you, you step forward. If it's not, you step back. We quickly learned that the executives had many of the same problems that the prisoners did. I want you to meet this fellow. His name's Smurfette. All the men have what they call a sweet name, which is the most ungangster name they can possibly have as a symbol of their change. And when Smurfette, whose name's also Jamie, gets out, he wants to come here to Dallas and start a t-shirt company. And he's going to have mentorship while he lives in a transitional home provided by PEP. In contrast, most Texas prisoners get 100 bucks and a bus ticket. These guys are not putting together business plans for the next Google or Facebook. They're talking about tradesmen businesses, a lot of them. But what they have in common is they know how these businesses work. They've learned how to do marketing. They've learned how to do financials. They're all really realistic business plans. And I've been to Ivy League business school competitions and have never seen presentations with so much eye contact. This fellow won with the best presentation, hands down, I've ever seen for a uh, air conditioning company. This is Daniel, who's from Dallas. He came out of my room for the first round of judging, and we got to be a big fan of his. Uh, he wants to start a welding business when he gets out. Uh, at the end of the program, they have a cap and gown graduation. Uh, more than half of these guys have never walked across the stage in a cap and gown before. Uh, so this is a really big deal for them. Uh, this is Scott, who I bonded with because he wrote the, uh, the blog for the class and wanted to be a journalist. There's staffers at PEP who have to fight to get the families to show up for the graduation because many of them have given up on these guys. Uh, you can see that by the end, they've come around. One uh, banker from Houston leaned over to me in the middle of the presentation and said, God, I wish somebody was that proud of me. At the end, they have a special visitation period. Uh, the men get to spend time without guards hanging over them. They give roses to their wives, teddy bears to their children, most of them the first gift that they've ever received from their father's hand. Uh, the organization needs help. Uh, if you want to be a mentor or volunteer, there's lots of opportunities for that. You can learn a lot more on their website. Also, if you go to my site, you'll find out a little bit about a book that I'm trying to publish on the subject. I want you to look around right now. Guys, raise your hands. We have some graduates of the program in the house with us tonight. 
And I'd like you to applaud them and welcome them to our community.